Let's look at the uh, uh, example of the bicycle tire and uh, what's happening with the molecules and uh, the pressure, okay? So if we uh, look at just the cross-section of the tire um, so that we have uh, the circle of the, of the tire there, um, there's gas, there's, there's some gas on the inside, all right? Uh, not a whole lot to begin with because it was flat, right? Um, and there's also gas around the outside uh, in the form of the air, okay? Now, if you look at the particles of gas, uh, the particles inside are, you know, they're bouncing around. And every time the particle bounces and it hits the side of the tire, okay, it pushes out a little bit, right? Pushes out and then bounces back uh, around. And so you have a little bit of constant outward pushing due to the molecules of gas that are inside the tire, okay? The same thing is happening on the outside. The air surrounding us is constantly bouncing around and some of it will hit the um, you know, the, uh, the tire, and it's pushing inward, okay? So you have an outward pushing from the gas inside, and you have an inward pushing from the gas outside. So um, if we look at this in terms of uh, the pressure, okay, pressure is defined as the force, okay, the force of that pushing, right, per unit area, okay, force divided by area. So if I take a, uh, a given portion of the area of this tire, okay, um, the amount of force that's being pushed on that given area Divided, uh, divided by the area is the pressure, all right? And uh, we're familiar with units of, at least in, in America, pounds per units of area are square inches. Pounds per square inch or PSI, all right? Pounds is our force. When you get on the bathroom scale, we're used to thinking of pounds as a weight or mass, but it's actually uh, mass times uh, the acceleration of, of gravity. You know, force is mass times acceleration, the acceleration of gravity in this case. Um, and so it's pretty much the same thing as long as you're on, on Earth. Uh, you have the Earth's gravitational um, acceleration, and uh, and so that force is equal to the mass um, with that uh, factor, and that's factored into your scale. So when you stand on the scale, you're really measuring the force, but it's showing you the numbers in terms of the mass. All right, but um, so we have force per unit area per square inch. So that means if, uh, say this is my square inch, and then I have a certain force pushing on that area. So the, the molecules, they're bouncing around. When they hit that area, you know, they're going to put a certain amount of force on it. And the force that they put on that given area is the pressure, okay? So um, that's where those units come from. But we're just looking at the molecules and how the molecules are pushing some, the ones outside are pushing in, the ones inside are pushing out, all right? So that means if I have about the same amount of molecules pushing in as I have pushing out, then it's going to be flat, right? I can squish it. There's no problem because 
the inward, uh, the force pushing in is equal to the force pushing out and it cancels each other out so there's no force. And then when I put an external force by squeezing it, um, it there's no uh, resistance. But if I have lots of gas in here, and that's what happens when I uh, fill this up, I'm pumping in more gas, so more and more particles are bouncing off of the walls, creating more and more force that's pushing out, okay? So now I have lots and lots of force pushing out, okay? And only the same amount pushing in. So this time, now after I've put in all that air, lots and lots of molecules are pushing out and it's firm to the touch. I, it takes a lot of force to uh, squeeze it because of all that force uh, pushing out um, from the inside, okay? So that's the effect of the, uh, the pressure. Um, the more molecules you have, the greater the, uh, the pressure that will be exerted, okay? And on the outside, you know, we're not changing the atmospheric pressure because that's open to the atmosphere. So that's going to be the same before and after we aired up the tire. If we want to measure the pressure inside our tire, we need a measuring device, just like a, a ruler measures length, or a graduated cylinder measures volume, uh, we have a device to measure pressure. Now there's different types. Uh, what I have here is a, uh, a little device that we put on the uh, tip of that valve and then the pressure inside the uh, tube or the uh, tire goes inside and it pushes and extends this um, <clears throat> little indicator at the end with our markings, okay? So I don't know how well this is showing up on the video, but uh, on here I have the markings and it even has different units. Here I have uh, what it says pounds um, at the bottom. That refers to uh, pounds per square inch, okay, or PSI, that's a unit of pressure. Um, and then here I have bar, all right? Bar is uh, very close to atmospheres, one atmosphere of pressure. Uh, so if it extends to that point, that means I have one, uh, one atmosphere of pressure inside the tire, okay? Or to that point, one and a half, two uh, atmospheres just about, okay? And then uh, I also have kilopascals, which is the uh, SI unit, the uh, standard metric unit that is used, um, pascals and uh, uh, or kilopascals, um, a, a very small unit, so there's lots of pascals in, uh, in a PSI. Okay, okay. Well, let's uh, do this and see what happens. We push this all the way in so that it will push it out. And then when we uh, mount this on here, all right, you see how it uh, extended it? And All right, so here we see how um, it has extended the uh, end of this uh, measuring device for the pressure. And this, uh, this side of the bar is in pounds, right? So what it's showing is in, in pounds, it's an abbrevi abbreviation for pounds per square inch, okay? So here's 10, 20, it's pushed this all the way a little bit past 30 pounds per square inch, almost uh, 32 PSI, okay? That's how much I aired it up to. Now, uh, this particular uh, measuring device has different units on different sides, okay? So you can kind of see the conversion um, between these different uh, different units, okay? Down here we have kilopascals. That is the uh, standard metric unit, the pascal, a very tiny unit. You can see um, 
that uh, the you know there are 70 kilopascals in the smallest uh, the smallest unit there okay that corresponds to about 10 psi um, so 70,000 because it's kilo 70,000 pascals that uh, that indicates that one pascal is a very very small amount of pressure and here we have 140 thousand psi so I've charged this up to um, 200 and uh, a little past 210 psi okay and that's what that says there that's the 210 marking and um, if you look at these these little dots or the, the marks and I have uh, there would be 140 and then up to um, 210 this is, these are strange markings but um, a little bit past 210 the way they mark that doesn't uh, give for the most accurate measurements okay then I have pounds again and then on this side I have bar okay bar uh, is uh, another unit of pressure and it's similar in value to the atmosphere one bar is uh, close to one atmosphere of pressure that is the amount of pressure exerted by the atmosphere you know that would be the the pressure um, of the air pushing onto the tire okay um, and you can see I have about uh, two maybe a little bit more than two uh, two bar okay of pressure and if I look at this I have four dots in between so 1.5, 1.6, 7, 8, 9, uh, 2.0, 2.1. So a little bit past 2.1 bar um, of pressure that I have put inside the tire. OK. 